Hey, what's up everyone? Sorry for the delay in terms of getting this race video up. Those who didn't know, I got married seven days before Ironman 70.3 Swansea and then managed to postpone my honeymoon till uh, the Tuesday after the race. So literally race Sunday, uh, packed up everything Monday and then went on honeymoon for like five or six days. So apologies, um, but I wanted to quickly jump on, give you guys a little bit of an update about how 70.3 Swansea went. And then, uh, yeah, just try and get a bit more content out in the build up to I'm in Wales in a few weeks time. So safe to say that having a race on like Swansea home turf was like pretty incredible. Um, a couple of the guys came down a few weeks before to recce the course. Um, just like the home, I guess home advantage, but just like all the local triathlon clubs, uh, Swansea Vale, Celtic Tri, uh, NFT, you know, uh, all of them out in force. Just made it a super special race to be at because I go to like some races I go to and you literally like only know yourself sort of thing. So it's really nice to go to an event and have so many people there that you just like walk past in transition or like bump into when you're like uh, registering the day before. And yeah, it's just a super cool vibe. It attracted a really, really strong domestic kind of field. We had a few international athletes come over. Uh, Ali Brownie obviously was the key on the key figurehead I guess on the men's start list um, and no one was really sure kind of what form he was in based on you know uh, coming back from injury and that sort of stuff so um, it felt like a pretty open race but yeah I, I guess just the excitement behind the day is it, one that like we kind of didn't ever really anticipate we'd get a race on home soil so actually to have a race of that caliber and have all the Ironman lorries and and have the whole city really embrace it was just pretty special. Basically, I just want to quickly go through some swim bike run, um, a little bit about what went well, what went badly, and then uh, yeah, I'll try and get on the videos more regularly for all you guys because I know that a few people have asked me uh, where the last one, well, <laughs> where the last one has been. So um, yeah, so basically, swim. We did a dive start. Um, it was a bit chaotic. We weren't really sure when we were going. There was a bit of a time delay. We then eventually lined up. I kind of set myself in the middle, cause thinking that. It wasn't the longest route to the first boy, but it wasn't the shortest and I didn't want to get caught up on like kind of like the sandwich. Um, anyway, the kind of horn went a bit before we were ready and um, the far right side got away really quickly. So Ali, uh, Tom Bishop, um, I think Jack Hutchison was over there as well and they got away really, really clean. Uh, I was with like Liam, Tom Davis, uh, Harry and it was just super messy our side. Yeah, as we all dived in, we were like instantly behind and, and we kind of like sandwiched the side I was on. And the guys on the far right just got a really, really clean start. So we went around the first couple of boys and I was literally like not even swimming. I was literally just like hitting someone on my right, hitting someone on my left, like no rhythm, no technique, just moving forwards. Um, luckily I managed to sort of uh, maneuver myself around that sort of group um, and then uh, as we got onto like the turn by the far left corner, if that makes sense to anyone there, before the long before the long straight section, um, I managed to get myself to the front of the group. I then just basically put in a bit of a dig, and um, Tom and Ali had basically got like a ten meter gap. I basically just bridged across to them, uh, settled in for a bit, took a bit of rest, and then went round and took the lead for like the last sort of, I guess like eight hundred meters or so, nine hundred meters. Uh, at the water, uh, sprint through transition, me, Tom and Ali, um, all pretty much just with each other, um, no separation, managed to change and get my bike and mount first, which was pretty cool. Um, and then, yeah, straight away onto the bike. Um, this is where like the bike was always the inter interesting section. Um, I kind of, uh, Alistair came around me straight away and just started just basically drilling it, um, I was kind of expecting it. So I kind of was willing to push harder than I wanted to ride for the whole ride. Um, so I kind of put my head down, was looking at the power meter and seeing like 400 watts um, or north of 400 watts, to be honest. Um, and Ali just literally just pulled away into the distance. Um, and then he must have just be obviously super aero guy, super a uh, little bit lighter than me probably, but he was just obviously just drilling it so I can't imagine what power he was pushing um anyway sort of settled into that second place uh maneuvered really really well through mumbles up through mumbles down into Caswell Bay up through Caswell Bay um holding my position really well 
Uh, I knew that there was going to be a good chase group with like Liam in it, Harry, Maurice and all that sort of guys. So I was kind of like waiting for them to come up um, while trying to just like be ride really tactically, like not work too hard, but like just keep the pressure on. Anyway, I yeah, got caught about mm, probably about 30k, I guess, 25, 30k in. Uh, Maurice came around me, we took a few turns. Uh, I could see behind me that there was like Teagle, uh, the Spanish guy. Uh, who else was in that group? Uh, Bishop was in the group, uh, Liam in the group. So I could see that there was a bit of a group behind us. Um, but I was thinking like, that was kind of like the perfect position to be in, like try and settle into the pace. And then if I have anything on the back end, you've got like the climb up Kevin Bryn and then the climb back over to Mumbles at the end. So um, there was a couple of opportunities to like kind of put a dig in. Um, so it was kind of a good, good position in the race to be. Uh, we took left hand out of, out of uh, Barry Green and um, we kind of got up and then down and as we went round uh, you take a right hander to ed sort of head to the far corner of the course uh, and on that right ha hander I just obviously like I just think I t took the corner a little bit too quick like kilometer an hour too quick or whatever you want to say uh, I think I lost a bit of pressure in my front tire because it just wasn't sort of stable it kind of wobbled a little bit um, and then I kind of started verging towards the grass bank and then just lack of experience. I kind of uh, panicked probably too quickly, tapped the brakes, wheels straightened up. And yeah, before I knew it, I was in a ditch. <laughs> it was full of stinging nettles. So I was literally just stung to bits. Um, someone helped me out, which was really nice of them. Um, I managed to jump back on my bike and everything seemed to be OK. Um, so I just got back on, started riding could see the group had just completely gone. I'd probably lost 90 seconds to two minutes. Um, so I started to try and work and see if I could like bridge back up at all. Um, but worked out pretty quickly that my rear mech had basically taken a hit. Um, so my bottom four kind of easiest climbing gears uh, were just completely redundant. I couldn't use them. Um, shifting from the big ring to the small ring again was an issue. Um, and I actually hopped off the bike a couple of times when I was going up climbs just because I couldn't shift into the small ring. So I had to stop the bike, shift down, get back on the bike. Uh, I tried, <laughs> don't try this at home. I tried bending the mech a couple of times, uh, didn't seem to work. Um, luckily, uh, Emir Wybeck, he's managed to uh, finish, uh, fix the rear derailleur. So yeah, no issues there now, but um, yeah, super frustrating on the day. I was almost like at the point where I was like, right, I'm just going to have to call a DNF, um, just because, you know, mentally it's really tough, you know, knowing that everyone else is up the road, you're not having the day you want, um, getting off your bike, you lose, just like literally just giving away time, just like standing at the side of the road, being like helpless basically. Um, but luckily Jack and Harry, um, Jack Hutchins, Harry Palmer came through. Um, so I was like, right, I'll try and ride with these guys for a bit. Uh, try and get back to T2 and then, you know, reassess then. So I kind of nursed the ride back to T2. I didn't really work very hard. I kind of took a couple of turns. Uh, Harry was struggling. Uh, Jack was kind of riding pretty hard still. Um, anyway, yeah, I got back to T2 uh, with those boys um, and then kind of got the shoes on and felt really good. Um, so yeah, Jack got the little jump. Jack got a little bit of a jump on to me and Harry out of T two. Um, we both bridged up to him, and we were running really, really, really well as like a a pack of three of us. Um, kind of just taking turns of like leading at the front, sitting back a bit. Super honest racing. Um, everyone was kind of like just letting. Well, I guess we all were in the same position where we were like off the back of the main race, but like kind of still fighting for the kind of pay positions so top eight got uh got prize money at this race so we were kind of fighting for those top eight still um we could see that people were coming back to us liam was like moving back backwards slightly um and james teagle as well so we just kept kept pushing kept pressing we were just hoping that people would like pop off um and yeah jack unfortunately uh dnf'd he was just not having a, just not having his day um harry and myself managed to keep bridging up and move forward a little bit and uh, I unfortunately got closed by a really, really fast closing Finn uh, Altraz, who's like literally just off the back of us uh, into T2 and managed to run us down. So yeah, super impressive racing. Overall, uh, overall, I give the performance like 
a C plus if I was going to grade it, um, maybe a B minus. Um, there was kind of really, really good takeaways. So the good takeaway for me was I kind of ran pretty well. Um, other than, you know, Ali and I uh, forgot the Spanish guy's name uh, who came second. Um, I was kind of like around the best of the rest in terms of like the run splits. I was like, there's a few guys, like Finn was like a 113 high, a couple of 114s, and then there was a few of us on 115. So, you know, I was kind of around the best of the rest with the run split, which is positive for me coming from like a complete non-running background. Um, the swim itself, I let out the swim, you know, any race that Alistair Brown is in, you know, is fast in terms of the pace of the swim. So to be able to ooh, wobbly hand. So to be able to lead out the swim was pretty cool. So it kind of shows me that my swim is in a good position. And actually, like for what I did do on the bike, my power wasn't too bad. It wasn't nowhere near what I'm capable of or the time or the split. But actually, I kind of was really, really proud of myself for like kind of battling through the adversity of like falling into a ditch. Um, the mechanical of the yeah, it was super cool to race in Swansea on the seafront um, around the Gower, you know, roads that roads and paths I like literally train on day in, day out. So just that's super, super special uh, to share the course with so many locals, um, to share the course with so many like um, British pros as well was super awesome. We had like proper sunny weather. Um, my now uh, mother and father-in-law uh, came down to watch and they'd never seen me do a race, which was pretty cool. Uh, Emily, my wife, she was there to watch it. It was just so local. Um, yeah, a buzzing about the whole event. Uh, unfortunately, the result wasn't quite as good as I wanted it to be. Um, but I'm super, I like, sort of really hope that the event goes ahead as a pro race again next year because it will be probably the first one I put down on my start list. Um, yeah, so hope you enjoyed this video, a little recap. Um, if you did the race, please drop a comment in the section below. Tell me what you thought about the race. Um, and then, yeah, in the next few weeks, I'll do a little bit of a pre Ironman Wales build up. Uh, but currently training is going well. Um, feeling super fit, feeling mentally pretty fresh and, um, yeah, looking forward to the final push. So check it, check you guys all in the next video.